Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. We are currently about halfway through our multi-part series all about getting started with XAML and .NET MAUI. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson. And I'm your co-host, Robert Green. And I'm your presenter, Paul Sheriff. Awesome. In the last episode, we talked about, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> we're doing all these back and back. <laughs> Reusable UI. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> yep, so we talked about reusable re UI, and this time around we are talking about borders and frames. Yeah, and we're gonna also create one more reusable UI with that as well. So great, so more reusable well, UI. <laughs> all right, now let's jump over and go into our application here. I'm on the main page, so on this main page I have that label, and we can put a border around just about anything. And when you have a border. A border is another one of those container type controls that allows you to put one or many things within it. Now, if you look at this, I've got it running over here. You don't see anything. Well, that's because a border by itself really doesn't do much. Okay. We have to add some things. So first off, we need to add stroke and we specify what color we want. Okay. And then the thickness. Oops, I misspelled it. There we go, stroke thickness. <laughs> and we do something like two. Okay, and then we can add you know, any horizontal options. So we can center this, and we can do a vertical options, and we can center this. Voila. Okay. Hey, you want to see a trick? A trick. Ooh, we have yeah. a trick. I like tricks. Yeah. So copy that code you just did where it says border. Okay. And then get rid of the whole border. Oh, just get rid of the whole thing? Yeah, get rid of the whole border. Okay. In the end. Okay. Now right click on label. Oh, okay. And then surround with. Surround with, yep. Choose tag if it's in there under region. Oh. Okay, select that and Oops. then type border. Yep. So tag. How come it's. What am I doing wrong here? I don't know what that. Don't you have to do this and then do the surround with? Uh, highlight all of label. Yeah. 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 Then do tag. And then what do you do? Click tag. Click it. I did. Double click it, maybe? All right. Now type border. There you go. Okay. Yeah, I don't use that one very often, but you're right. That is kind of nice. So. It's so much nicer than typing border and then having to move the closing element <laughs> to the right. Right. Just a little. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like those. I use I use the insert snippet, you know, and the surround. I've used the surround with on other stuff. I didn't know about the tag option, though. That's kind of cool. Because when you're in, uh, when I'm in HTML, of course, it has all the nice tags already there. So yeah. that's kind of neat. So. All right, good. So there we go. So we have a border. A border is nothing more. It's just, it's, you know, Basically, just UI goodness. Uh, there's, you know, you don't need to, need to have it, uh, but you can. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the app styles. So I'm going to open up my app styles here. And if you remember, we had a grid page. I'm going to add another guy here called border dot page. So this border page is in a stroke of gray, stroke thickness of one, a margin of five. And the horizontal options and vertical options are both going to be set to fill. Let's now go open up our login page right here. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a border around this grid. Okay. So if you know we use you know, I like collapsing this too, by the way. So you don't have to go go everywhere. You can just highlight the whole thing. So I, I did a uh, uh, shift end. So now I'm highlighted across the whole thing. And then I can do the surround with tag. And then I can change this to a border. All right. So there's a way to do it very quickly without having to, like Robert said, cut it out here. And then you have to go all the way down and find the end of it. So use that collapsible stuff too. Okay. And then what I would do is I would do the style equals. And then I would use my static resource. And there it is, border.page. Okay. 
So by doing this, I could do this across all of them if I wanted to. So I could do the login. Let's see, I've got the user detail view. I could do that one as well. Do that one. And then on the product detail, let's do it one more time. And then again, if you come down here and you know where it's going to be, if you do the lesson sign forward slash, it'll tell you which one it's missing. And then just hit tab. So lots of ways we can, you know, skin this cat here, okay? Now, let's see, since I added that in the app styles, right, I need to restart, don't I? Okay, so I'll just do a restart on the application. It'll save everything. There we go. And then, oh, sorry, I didn't do that on the user list. There we go. So now you can see the border this light gray border is around that guy and around that guy and around that guy. So it kind of just contains it a little bit. And I'm not saying you have to do this. I'm just trying to point out the use of the, uh, the border here. All right. Now that's fine, but I want to show you something. Let's go to that product screen. Remember the product screen? It had a lot of entries. So if we go back to the product detail and we look at this, let's bring this over. So we see product name, number, size, weight. We got category, model, selling star. Oh my gosh, I'm missing a lot of stuff here. Okay. The problem is what? They're hidden. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want to get those so I can see them. So what I can do is I can come in here, right? And inside of the border, but before the grid, I would use what's called a scroll view like so, okay? So if I take that scroll view and then I put in the, oops, I thought I hit it right, but I didn't, there we go. Okay, so now I've wrapped that guy there. Now look at what happens. I've got a little scroller. Mm -hmm. So definitely you're going to wanna to take advantage of these because on Windows you may not need it, but if somebody were to really, you know, uh, really scrunch this down, or if they're running it on a on a form or on a screen that's smaller, you're definitely going to need these scroll views. So one of the things that I typically do is I typically put in this. This is my kind of go to here, right? Where I do the border, I do the scroll view, and then I create my grid. So these are the things that I do most often. Now there's one more thing here that we can kind of put all this, you know, together again. And that's another one, another border type thing. It's called a frame. Okay, now I've never really understood, Robert, maybe you know, what is the real difference between a border and a frame? I have never been able to figure that out. <laughs> um, Good, I'm glad you're yeah. hesitating too. I, <laughs> so, I know, sometimes I think it's just rooted in history, don't you? Well, sometimes. Yeah. So anyway, all right, we got another one that's called a frame, but I want to just to be complete on everything. I like showing people, you know, the different ones. So let's go ahead and add another new item. This is going to be another reusable. I'm going to do a content view here. I'm going to call it address view. And I'm going to go ahead and replace all of this with a frame, a stack layout. And then I've got a label, I've got a box view, and then a grid, and in the grid, I've got some entry stuff. And then I wanna reuse this address view on one of the screens. So let's go back here, let's go to our user detail view. I'm gonna come up to the top and I'm gonna add one more auto. And then just before that last horizontal horizontal, yeah, right before the buttons, I'm going to add in this grid row six. So that means I need to change this one to be number seven. And there is that partial address view that's now using a frame. Now, one of the big differences that you saw with the border, the border I actually had to style to get it to kind of look like something. The frame actually is already defined in styles. So if we look in here and we find a frame, you can see that they've already got a border color set up and they've even done a quarter, corner radius on this. Now they did set the has shadow to false. So if you like the shadowy type stuff, you can do that as well. 
But there we go. So we the frame is kind of already predefined. So that's one difference between a border and a frame. But let's go ahead and run this and we'll take a look at our user detail screen and we'll see that address show up. And that's now a reusable view that we could put on other uh, screens, right? So if we had a customer screen, like we had a customer detail that I built, I could put it there as well. So let's go navigate to the detail and there it is. So within the frame, I created like a title area and then I added another box view to kind of separate that. And then I have the data entry stuff underneath. And what should I do here? Notice the save and cancel is kind of off there. Mm -hmm. So I should add on my user detail view between the border and the grid, I should add that scroll view. And that way I can now scroll down. Yeah, so the frame is used to wrap a, lay a view or layout with a border that can be configured with color, shadow, and other options. So I think it's the border is really more of just a line and the frame is more of a layout element almost that has a border but then can also have rounded corners and shadows and so drop shadows stuff like that okay so there we go now we know the main difference i am thank you for looking that up i know god love uh, the docs we mentioned those <laughs> earlier when do you think i got I that information from the docs right so you can see the border doesn't have corner radius yeah. right and it does have a shadow okay. so that's you know interesting so there are a few differences between them, but not much. <laughs> so, all right, well, there we go. So we, you know, have a couple more things that we can do. We have a border, we have a frame, and then that scroll view. And you definitely want to take advantage of that scroll view because you never know, you never know where you're going to use it. So cool. there we go. End of another great episode, right? Yeah. <laughs> sweet. We like those short and sweet ones, don't we? I do like the short and sweet ones. <laughs> I cool. can't speak for Robert, but at least for me, I, I, I like short and sweet. But um, yeah, it's nice. This app is coming along nicely. It's looking very pretty, I think, at this yeah. point, specifically the forms section. So yeah. Um, so what's up next? Well, we're actually going to take a look at stuff that you'll probably find a little bit more on the phone, and that's the switch. So it's kind of an on-off toggle. But there's some problems with it on Windows, and I'm going to show you how to fix. Ooh, so we'll okay. take a look at that, uh, and then we'll also take a look at like radio buttons as well. Cool. So Excellent. all the cute little slider options and things. Yeah. Great. So until then, thank you all so much for watching up to this point. We are getting to our halfway point. I think next episode is episode nine proper out of our 18. So keep on watching, and happy coding.